Welcome back to Cope's Corner. I'm your host, as always, Mike Copenhaver, a.k.a. Real Mike. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, all the likes of K-O-P-E-S-K-O-R-N-E-R. Stoked to be back with my man, Mr. B, the MMA guy, will be the co-host for tonight. We'll be talking about some bare-knuckle boxing. Go, uh, the main event will be, uh, Luke, it'll be Mike Perry versus Luke Rockhold. Fucking dyslexic and uh, mix that up. Um, so it should be a fun one and then a few others. And then also we got the UFC Sadong versus Simone. Uh, which will be a good, uh, fairly decent UFC main. It'd be a good main. I don't know about main event, but we're that's just what we're gonna have to do. I'm, you know, so. But either way, while we're here, the first sponsor of the show I'd like to thank is Melon Brand Hats. It's M E L I N. It's a luxury line of hats that my boy Brian McDonald is one of the co-founders. He dreamed up in high school. We talked to how we'd have a hat line unlike anything you've ever seen. Different patterns, really cool materials, uh, intricate details. Really, really cool stuff, especially the waterproof hydro editions. They just dropped a really cool one uh, with Skywalker art. Uh, really got really dope dude who's got really dope designs uh, featuring nature. And so the hat um, has some nature designs on on the inside of the um, inside of the hat. Really, really cool. So make sure you go and give them some support. And last but not least, the reason why we're here is my man Sua Law Group, Brandon Sua, one of the best law practitioners that there is in California, let alone the USA. Does family law, criminal law, and personal injury. Uh, my brother has obviously had to use them for the criminal side, and, and I've also had to use them as well. Uh, whether it comes to crooked DAs, crooked cops, whatever it may be, he's really, really good, man. He got both my double felonies dropped when I had them charged on me. Um, family law, if you got a baby mama drama, he does really, really good stuff with that. And if, you, if you're having problems with, uh, you know, baby mama or the daddy giving you drama, he uh, called Brandon Sua, Sua Law Group, Ventura County, California, Simi Valley, and Ventura, the city. So uh, my man, Mr. B, the MMA guy, is the co-host. How you doing, my dude, B? I'm good, man. What's happening, Mike? What's happening? Tony oh, B, man. what's up, bro? <laughs> Always stoked uh, to be here with you um you know we missed the uh, last week because uh, i was a little bit busy also a little bit uh what's up tony d nice to see you man uh the ufc is just car the cards are just a little bit watered down b you know uh yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's 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 tough to get us fired up especially us fans who've been fans since the very beginning pretty much and we support it all the time i mean i don't li i don't like to be fake and so if there's nothing to get excited about there's just nothing to get excited about and so yeah, uh, the UFC ever since it got bought out just is not quite the same. But we do what we do. We'll make money where we make money and try to make some good bets, some good leans. But uh, Mr. B, you said it's raining a ton over there in uh, New York, huh? But yeah, man, it's been raining. It's been raining crazy, man. We got rain yesterday. Mm. We had some rain today. We're supposed to get hit with rain tomorrow. Oh boy, <laughs> dude, i I I watch a lot of like food food stuff like on YouTube. And whether yeah. it's like little food carts in Japan or so Korea, it could be t uh, Philippines, Thailand, wherever. But I see a, a lot of them are over there in New York City. Is there a like, dope ass like food cart that does something like a like a Philly cheesesteak or something dope over there that you stop by ever? You know those little carts, little metal ones. I don't. We don't have them very often over here. But do you ever eat off those things? Oh, I do. Um, if I gotta say, if there's a food cart. That I like that's near me. Boy, it gotta be like by Pelham, by Pelham Parkway. That's a couple train stops from where I'm at. What do you eat? What do you they, eat off there? Oh man, this this they got this uh they got a Mexican one. And it's actually funny because they kind of started off as a cart, then they got a truck, then they got an even fancier truck now. But it was tacos. It was tacos. Oh, I used tacos? To get tacos. Okay, yeah. so you, you love tacos too. Yeah, I used to get tacos off of the. They had the food, the food cart. Um, they started off at a food cart. Um, then they got a food truck. Oh, okay. But now they got an even bigger food truck. Oh, damn. On Pelham, and that thing got a line, man. Oh my god. That but sounds like this place. Uh, it's called Kogi Barbecue. K O G I. It's a Korean barbecue food truck, but they do Korean Korean short rib tacos. Yeah. Meat. It is straight fire, dude. It's uh, it's like a fusion between tacos, obviously, and uh, Korean, and like the they also have these like bagol bagolgi tacos and a bunch of like Ooh. really cool stuff, a kimchi quesadilla. Um, so but the chef Roy um is the original owner, or he still is the owner of the food trucks, but they now have he has a residency over in Las Vegas, so kind of similar to the food truck over there, like just you know they make 
people love their food, you know. I do. Yeah. So yeah. I was just curious. I just curious. I love food, and I just I always dream about the hot dogs over there. I guess I watch yeah. too much fools rush in, and you know, you see the yeah, great papaya. Is great papaya's <laughs> hot dog a real thing? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's a real that's a real thing, huh? Yeah. I uh, do. Like I want papaya hot dogs. Yeah, you got a papaya smoothie, like a papaya there's drink, a, and you got your two hot dogs. Yeah. There, there's the chill, like the chili dogs, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, see, I'll, I'll fuck those chili dogs up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> they got good hot dogs though. You do yeah. was a, it was Matthew Perry right on Fool's Rush in. I believe uh -huh. he was he was shipped those dogs over there from New York over to Las Vegas for the Selma Hayek and her titties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's what at least that's yeah. what I saw. But uh, um, yeah, but yeah, man. So, but with that said, the reason why we're here is to talk about some fights. Also, like I said, if the, if I, it's almost more entertaining just to talk to B. I'd rather talk to B about random life stuff right now than fights in general, and that's weird for me, B. You know what I mean? Word. And so, I hear well, you, that's, man. That's just that's just because, like I said, it's just the world's getting soft. There, there's not a lot of good people, like good people you mingle with. But Mr. B, I love his, his energy and love chatting with him. Especially when we have some good fights to talk about. Give me a dominant cruise fight. I fucking don't even like the guy. I'll get fucking fired up for the fucking card. B, you know? <laughs> like, shit. Yo, you dude. know what's crazy about that? Quick, quick, quick uh, side sidebar what's real up? quick. They're lining him up for Cody Garbrandt in a rematch. Whoa, that's that's kind of wild, bro. Yeah, I, I was kind of shocked about that. They they okay. made like, yeah, it's a possible. Who do, have, who do you have right off the bat on that one? Off the like your initial lean in a rematch yeah i might take Cruz. oh man you're dirty you're a dirty dirty man i'm taking <laughs> I, I, I maybe I, I don't know maybe i just hate Cruz too much but i'm taking the garbrand i don't know why i think they it possibly could edge it out if if Cruz gets hurt or something he's so he's so he gets hurt so often and his chin isn't that good anymore Bro. but Either way, uh, that'd be fun to just get get some kind of fights that we want to get fired up on. But this weekend, we got the bare knuckle boxing going down. Um, what's it called? It's going down at what time? Be six thirty, six six p.m. Pacific Standard Time for me, nine p.m. Eastern Standard Time for B on yeah. Saturday. It'll be after yes. the UFC event um, that's going down. We're gonna do the UFC after the bare knuckle. Uh, BKFC forty one Perry versus Rockhold will be the main event. Mike Perry, yes. Luke Rockhold. Eddie Alvarez versus Chad Mendez is also that is just a banger. B, I can't I can't believe we're gonna see that. That's savagery at his finest, it, and I can't believe it, man. It's gonna be Yo, epic, bro. Did you see those two at weigh-ins? Holy no, that, shit! You know I didn't I didn't because I've, I've just been so busy with the, the kids and stuff. But were they getting into yeah. each other's face and stuff? Bro, when you get the chance to, to watch the face-offs, man. The way in the face-offs. Jesus Christ, Eddie Alvarez looks monstrous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gonna be. Fun, I know man. Chad. Chad's looked beefy as hell, man. He's short. He's you know, short, Chad, but he's so short, dude. Yeah, you know, because Chad eat all that nature food. Chad is eating oh. just straight up hunted animal meat and stuff. You know, yeah. what I mean? eating wild. Yeah, get, get in that. Get in that protein and that. Uh, that uh, uh, you know, those steroids probably too. But we don't talk about that. <laughs> Um, but the, the first the first fight that we're going to talk about on the main oh, card is going to be uh, Brandon Gertz is going to take on Christian Torres. Uh, Christian Torres is a boxer, obviously he's bare knuckles, so he's going to he better have some kind of skills like that. He also fought MMA uh, before as well. Um, I, yeah. I have his record at zero and one. I don't know if they're talking about just bare knuckle boxing, but I see a lot more than zero and one. I'm seeing a lot. I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, a lot of eight, nine, ten losses dating back to 2013 into his amateur career, into his professional career. And I don't like what I'm seeing off the bat. I don't even know the guy. And I'm sorry, Christian. I sound like a dick right now. I don't know you. You don't know me. But I, I don't fight for a living. So it doesn't look very like it's going to be very good for you. But either way, he's taking on Brandon Gertz. Brandon Gertz, 16 and 10, um, 38 yeah, years old. Time. What's up? Yeah, long time. Uh, I was gonna say long time um Bellator competitor. Yes, Brandon Gertz. Right. Yeah. And uh wasn't he a wrestler, bro, at one point? Am I, I um, he was a collegiate wrestler. 
Okay, there you go. All right, so uh, that's what I remember. So either way, so yeah. this is a weird one because now we have a, a wrestler who was a decent MMA fighter fighting a guy that seems to somewhat have experience bo- like standing up. Um, I'm I'm favoring Brandon Gertz off the bat, off athleticism, off of everything in general, but that's just off of a whim and off of a hair, and I don't really like the other guy's record, and he's lost so many times by knockout. Um Let's see. Has this dude ever lost by a stoppage? Who I guess hurts? he lost. He, he lost. Yeah, he lost his first bare knuckle fight by stoppage too. To Jake. Yeah, he Lennon. had a cut. He had a cut though. He had a cut. Yeah. So that that then that, that and so he didn't no, really I, quit. Quit. Uh, so yeah, I'm Gertz taking is Brandon. A tough, yeah. Yeah, tough, I'm Gertz taking. Is a Br- tough son of a bitch. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna roll with Brandon Gertz on this. I think he's got too much um, ex- experience. He's a couple years elder. Um, but, um, Christian Torres fights, I guess at 156 normally, uh, versus the 145, they're both five, seven, 69 inch reach for, uh, Brandon Gertz, 67 for Christian Torres. So I, either way, Gertz has got two inches on the reach. I'm going to go with Gertz, but man, I really do wish there was a, this was an MMA fight and I could pick, uh, them too, you know, B. Right. I but hear either you, way, man. it's going to be fun. Definitely. Who, definitely. What do you got? I'll take Gertz. I'll take Gertz. Gertz has always proven to be a tough SOB, man. That dude has banged with some of the most dangerous strikers in Bellator, yo. From, yeah. uh, was it Saad Awad? He had that insane fight with Derek Campos where they both literally damn near knocked each other out on the feet. Yo, he has a chin, man. He has a really good chin. So I'll, I'll take, I'll take uh, Gertz. Okay, you got Gertz too. Yeah, well, I'll like I said, Gertz. it's gonna be unanimous. But like I said, he's got a good chain spot, so some good competitors, and that's why I kind of just I'm feeling him. Um, but I don't think he is the best boxer, and that in this that could could be a problem. But the next fight of the night is Chris Camozzi takes on Dan Spawn B. You gotta break that one down first. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy, <laughs> man. Chris Camozzi and Dan Spawn. Chris Camozzi, yeah. where has he been, dude? Besides getting beat up. Yo, yo Chris comozzi has been everywhere. Chris Camozzi was in the UFC. I think Chris Camozzi was on Glory Kickboxing. Chris Camozzi, I think, was either on Bellator or the PFL, I think. Chris Camozzi, man. Yo, He's all over. but Chris Chris is good. Chris got good striking. He got pretty, he does. Yeah, decent striking. And he's leveled up a lot since, you know what I mean, joining uh, when he was in Glory. He did pretty damn well. I didn't know his, his his kickboxing was that good. I liked his brother. His brother's kickboxing was pretty damn solid. But he leveled up, man. And then he's going up against Dan Spawn. Um, now Spawn unfortunately had that bad run on um in the UFC. I think he was on the Ultimate Fighter. He got beat up on the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. He went to the PFL. He got beat up in the PFL. It's kind of like a hit and miss with um Spawn his last couple fights in his career, man. Um, he's a tall dude though. Uh, yeah, six four. Um, yeah, it's like about six four. Um, what is it? Seventy seven inch reach. Yep, yep. But he's hella hella tall, man. But as I said, he just eight. The last person he beat was Daquan Townsend. And you know Daquan Townsend didn't even win a fight in the UFC. What did he, he got do? dogged out? He, just he got dogged in, out. Got <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. So you know, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, it, it, it's just it's just kind of crazy how this all this because just came around full circle for him. But uh, we'll see how he does. I'll take Kamozi on this one. I just like Kamozi striking. I think Kamozi's the more cleaner striker. I think Spawn's going to go in there, try to land big because that's what he's more known for. Does heavy shots, big shots. Um, while Kamozi works better in combination, he kind of reminds me a little bit of, I know this guy you don't kind of like, but Dustin Jacoby, <laughs> that's how he kind of is with, the, with his striking. So I'll take uh, Kamozi. Yeah, I mean, he made some good points. I mean, I, I'm... I'm leaning with Kamozi too. I think he's do has a lot of experience. He's tough and he's rangy. Um, what is it? Who's Dan Spawn fought? 
Townsend doesn't even count as a win. Uh, I'm just so I just you know I just don't think the experience I just don't like the experience factor for Dan Spawn. I know he does have a lot of experience with his record, obviously nineteen eight and one, but I don't like yes. the, the actual competition that he's he's faced against. I mean, Chris Camozzi has been all over the place and really tough competitor, and and especially when he's in this uh, situation where he's being doubted. I wonder what are the yeah. odds, what are the odds right now. I don't know, but see. more than likely, Kamozi would probably be a favorite. Uh, of course, Tapology doesn't have a quick reference for me. Yeah, either way, I'm going Chris Kamozi. So is uh, Mr. B. Um, it's Either way, this should be a, a pretty good fight between these two guys. Um, it, it On paper, it looks just like a whatever, but I think the, that actually one of these guys ends up real bloodied up and should be a fun one, right, B? I, yeah, I, wish, they, I wish they could do it. No elbows, right, B? Oh, no, 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 no elbows at BKFC. Uh, okay. We just got straight up boxing okay. and dirty boxing in the clinch. That's it pretty I was, much. I figured not, but I just, man, if, if there were some <laughs> elbows, if, if there were some elbows, Kamozi would really, that would be really nice. Word. What's up, Army yeah, Vet? Army Vet's in the chat, man. Ar Army Vet in the house. Holy moly. What's up, my dude? How are you doing, man? Hope that you're good. Hope your family's good. Um, so, but yeah, the, so the next fight is going to be between For Beck the women's Rawling, title. the fucking former yeah. UFC fighter, is taking on Christine Fer Ferreira. What do you say that? Be? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you said it right. Christine Ferreira, right. man. This, this is going to be a, a really good fight between two tough girls, man. Yes, um, indeed. I, I love me some Beck Rollins, and so I'm kind of biased towards that. But I think I'm. I hate to say it, this is gonna be a real tough uh, out for her. Um, I know that Christine's she's gonna be older at six years older, uh, but she's tough as shit, man, and she's mean. And so, fuck, dude. What do we have? The reach. The reach isn't listed for Christine. Do you know the reach on her? Sixty-four and a half for uh, Beck Rawlings. I'm wondering how long. Um, Christine is they're both you know five six five five. Uh, how, so how, wait, what's the reach you said for um Beck says 64, Beck? And a, 64 and a half, but Christine doesn't have one listed. She'll probably be like 62. Okay, Let so a little see. bit shorter. See, I'll check it, man. So I have a, a lot of love for uh, Beck Rollins, I think she's real tough, she's real tough, and then her boxing has developed really well. Um, so I'm gonna go Beck Rollins, but I think that this could be a this could be a real fun. This going to be a real fun oh, fight. Could be 66. one six. Sixty six. Damn. Sixty six. See, that's what worries that. me, man. Is the the if she does have a length advantage, she's tough. And I'm gonna go Beck Rollins. B. I'm not betting these because this is just gonna be fun to watch. But I'm going Beck Rollins. B. Do you who are you going with? I'm taking Christine, boy. Oh, see, that's what I'm I really taking want. Christine. See, I have too much yeah. love. I got too much I, love. I've watched this. I've watched this shit for too long, and yo, I have not missed out on these fights. I've watched Christine. Christine is a menace. She's mean. My only, my only regret about in BKFC as far as women's division goes is that Helen Peralta didn't re-sign with the organization. Other than that, Christine Faria is the monster in this division, boy. And Beck got reach. You know, Beck could, Beck could box. She could box long. I never seen Beck fight close range, boy. And that's the problem. Christine could mix it up long range if she could fight behind the jab. And she throws power punches, bro. She got power. She throw with ill intentions, man. That's what I'm saying. It's, That's so my the love, shit. My, so my, my love and, for Beck Rollins has gotten to me, and I told you that, Zap, when I first started this. So, B, yeah. listen to him on this one. And if you do want to bet, I'd listen to B on this one because I, I, on that one, I just don't have enough to say besides I, I just – maybe maybe if I just – maybe I'd rather fuck Beck Rollins. That's just the honest truth. I just – it's terrible. Let's be honest. Probably just like Beck. You probably just like Beck. I, I just Beck was, was saying, I just fine. I was. It's been a minute. Being, it's been a minute. Beck was looking honest. fine out there. I see. I, was, I, see I just it. being. I was being honest. You know what I mean. But uh, but yeah. So I'm not gonna so let that cloud my judgment though. Uh, <laughs> uh, so he's, he's got Christine on that one. I don't blame him because my initial instincts were that I would roll. I I liked her too. I think that's scary for Beck. 
But I think Peck's tough. I think she has a lot of experience. And uh, hopefully that, you know, the veteran versus a newcomer, this is not the situation for that B, but I feel like that's in my head. And I think that's yeah. also che- that's also cheating me a little bit um, on the UFC MMA side of things. But either way, the next uh, fight is the co-main event of the night. Eddie Alvarez takes on Chad Mendez. And man, dude, I, I cannot believe we're going to get this fight. I think that this is a mismatch. Um I think that Eddie Alvarez is fucking way too big, way too tough. Without the wrestling of Chad Mendez, I know uh, Chad has heavy hands. I know he can knock someone out. But, he, dude, Ad, Eddie's taking punches from fucking Dustin Poirier and big guys, man. Um, I just don't think that Chad is, is that dude. I, um, the reach for uh, Alvarez, 69 versus 66 for Chad Mendez. 5'6 for Chad Mendez versus 5'9. So the same reach, three inches on height, three inches on reach for Eddie. <laughs> but um, I'm going Eddie Alvarez here. I think it's clear as day. I think he absolutely dominates. Um, I think that this should be a fun one, though. And there will be lumps on all both these guys' faces by the end of this one, B. Yeah. This is a tough fight, man. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to take Chad Mendez. Oh, my God. This is going to be – I'm taking dirty. Chad. You are dirty. I'm taking Chad. And there is a reason why. There's a reason why. Chad has taken a lot of time off between MMA and bare knuckle. From, from leaving MMA to going to bare knuckle. That boy is quick. Not only did he size up, he got bigger. But he's managed to maintain his speed. And he throws with dynamic power as a featherweight. Bro, he's out here at 160 something, bro. That's that's problematic, and he's doing some of these folks dirty. Um, his last fight, he fought that dude. Was it Fames? I think it was. Beat up Fames like nobody's business. You got Alvarez now. Alvarez. When's the last time Alvarez fought? Alvarez fought an MMA. I think it was like about a year or two ago. A year or two ago. Uh, he fought Lapicus. I think that was his last fight. 2021. So like over two years. Yeah, about two. Yeah, a little over two years now. Oh, two, two years, years on the two years on the dot today. Sorry. Yeah, know what I mean. And his run at one wasn't all that great, man. Um, I know it, it all depends on if Eddie's motivated. That's what I think is gonna come down to. If Eddie's the guy that's motivated and he's going in there for a war, shit, we're gonna see another instant classic from Eddie. But if Eddie's not in that focus and he's been on that kind of eerie run that he's had since leaving the UFC to go do one, then, boy, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, Eddie's How been in a lot you. of wars throughout his career, man. How dare you That's be. the shit, too. I don't like down the Philly, man, boy, but yeah. I, might, I might doubt him this time around. I'm going to take Chad Mendez, man. But this shit is not going to end pretty. It's going to end Man, ugly dude. for one of the two. He, so so this is going to be a wild one. Either B is going to be real right or I'm going to be real right because we're both opposites today. Uh, but this is like this. One, I'm not betting these. So this I don't. I Honestly, I'm telling you, don't bet what I'm saying on these ones. Besides, no, this is the one of the ones I thought that you could bet. Uh, I would bet. Yeah, this one you could bet. You could bet. I would just, bet this you know one. What I, mean? I would figure so it I out. Just, yeah. But. Most of the other ones, listen to B. Um, this one, I think Eddie Alvarez is the dude. But we shall see. Because this is bare knuckle boxing. It's, I mean, one fucking nose breaks. One one eye, orbital socket gets broken, B. And everything changes. A hand breaks if everything changes, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's really, that. This, these fights are fun, man. And that leads us to the main event of the night, B. Mike Platinum Perry takes on Luke Rockhold. And I can't believe that that's a real thing that's going on, but I fucking love it. This feels like uh, like a, a fight we would make like in UFC yourself. If you like, if you had the video game and you could just fight whoever you want, be like, yeah, you just, you just would make a fight. So, but uh, we got Luke Rockhold, who's the staggering six foot three, versus the five ten of Mike Perry, five uh, seventy one inch reach for Mike Perry, seventy seven inch reach for Luke Rockhold. Yes, indeed. um, I'm gonna be honest. Luke Rockhold has better. He only has good hands if he has he has his kicks, and his kicks are better than his hands. In my in my honest, real opinion, because his jujitsu is better than all of them. Neither of his kicks nor his jujitsu is gonna be here. 
Yes, he's big. Yes, he's got a nice body. Yes, fucking some bunch of girls might want to fuck him. Um, but man, dude, this if Mike Platinum Perry somehow gets in the pocket beat and lands yeah. on Mike on Rockholt's fucking face, he's going night night B. Oh yeah. He's yeah, going he night night. Is. And so yeah, I'm, I'm going Mike Perry to land because I know I can bet say for sure 100 percent Mike Perry's going to let the gas tank out. What swing like a madman at least at some point and he's got to catch Luke Rockle at some point B there's no way he doesn't catch him and, and stun him I just don't see I just I can't pick Luke Rockle his chin is terrible and then I don't like his, his punches if he has no kicks and then he has no jujitsu to back it and so I don't know man I'm going platinum Perry call me crazy call me whatever call me gay call me queer call me steer and just be clear what are you going with B it's gonna be a fun fight man um, I'm only gonna take Perry because I think Perry yes. has the experience. That's what I'll I'm take talking Perry about. over the experience because Perry That's actually has the experience in these fights. He understands the rules of the game, and that's a big factor when coming into these bare knuckle fights. Rockhold, as you said, Rockhold is not able to use his kick, so he's not quite able to establish his hands, and that's always been the thing with Rockhold. You know, um. Throughout his career, his jiu-jitsu is A1. His kicks are fire. We don't really hear much about his hands. He yeah. is a southpaw, if I remember correctly. He has his left hand. When he throws that straight left, is dynamic, but he always has to set it up. And in bare knuckle, you're able to throw punches and you're able to clinch. And Perry has managed to fight outside to get inside to throw nasty shots and clinch. He wears on you, he wears on you, and he keeps firing, 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 man. And that's going to be his path. Luke Rockhold has to fight this at range, but I'm not sure he's going to manage to keep range all those rounds against uh, Perry. Fuck, MVP couldn't do it. So it was like, yo. And then you see how good MVP could box. He just wasn't accustomed to that bare knuckle. I think Perry gets this one, man. It'll nice. be a tough one, but I think Perry gets this one. That's what I like to hear, B. I like when you you. you we'll take with Perry. Me. This is gonna be madness, and I'm fucking. I'm all down for that, dude. The, these three, yeah. the, the three fights on the end of this card are well worth uh, your time. I don't know about your yes. money, so you could do what you do and just make sure you watch it. But I don't know what you're gonna do with your money. You don't need to use it. You can just watch it. So you just be smart. Um, Kick you your bass, what's up, bro? What's up? What's up? Kick your bass. How you doing, my dude? Oh, Army Vet asked how you and the family was doing, Mike. Uh, Army, the family is good. Army Vet, sorry, uh, B was talking when I highlighted that. Thank you, B, for pointing that out. No um, for do, doing very good. My five year old's doing, uh, you know, T ball or Shetland, they call it in pony baseball here. So tomorrow he's got his uh, baseball game. I'm stoked to go coach. Um, just been riding a lot on the motorcycle, Army Vet, and um, saving. We've been, I've been saving up for uh, this really rare motorcycle this harley that i want over in florida um that i'm pretty positive i i've made a deal with this old man so i'm stoked to go pick that up at the end of the end of may and so i'm gonna drive out there and get that so i'm just uh just taking care of the family and fucking doing what we do growing the marijuana growing uh vegetables taking care of the chickens taking care of my kids uh hollywood's been super slow right now that all the uh all, of course, like we couldn't get all the carpenters to strike, but when the writers want to strike, who make all the money, they got they gladly strike in the union. So the writers are striking. So there's be there'll be a, you know there's not going to be as much uh, you know work in Hollywood, but it is what it is. Uh, things are all always you know what you make of it. But uh, yeah, family's good. Thank you, Army Vet. But man, so with Mike Perry, Luke Rock will be that that's that's going to be a good one, man. So we're both going with Mike Perry, yeah. Yes. Nice. We're both going to take All the right. Mike Perry on that well, one. With that said, then we will move on to the UFC card. And let me uh let me get it up on the screen just in case. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so we got UFC Fight Night Sadong y- y- Sadong is it song Yadong song, right? Yadong song, song Yadong. I just be like it, it almost sounds like something you'd say to your friend when you're talking about a schlong. Yadong Slong. <laughs> it's something crazy like that, dude. 
Um, oh, but yeah, he's taking cool. on Ricky Simone at the main event. The co-main event yes. will be Kyle Barallo versus McCall Olszewczyk. Um, there'll yeah. be there'll be a few fights on here. They'll be worthwhile. There'll be a bunch that. There'll just be a bunch. Um, that's all I yeah. can say. But no, Mr. B will try to be more professional than me when it comes to some of that stuff. Um, Army vet, Miss Mike, and you watching the fights with me? Oh, I'm dude. I I know it's the stupid okay that I that okay Cupid doesn't let me comment or like be a part of it without joining it. And I'm just worried about that Russian app um, them spying on me or being no. So that's the only problem. When it was Haps, when it was the other thing, it was it was just easier for me. But uh, yeah, that's people just, telling me to get the Twit Casting app it, oh, to use what? that and broadcast because I know do, Dirty do. D's on that. Do it, yeah. Not, that's what you need to do. See, I didn't know that. See, I, then I would. It would be easier for me to to tune in and just mess around. I love uh, hearing B just chat and just being with all the boys and, and the ladies and that are here. Uh, back in black yeah. is creeping in the back over there somewhere, maybe. But um, but yeah. So either way, but yeah, I definitely do. I I sh- I should always be jumping in there with B, but it's just not as easy as it was. I used to right. be. I used to be with be able to be with the family anywhere, pretty much. And I could just click and jump in and and listen and watch Mr. B do whatever he was doing, and and shoot the shit. And so, you know, what since yeah. Periscope left and then Haps left, it just it could just puts a damper. It's not on the same, the, yeah, man. It puts a damper on the streaming world. And you know, I don't mean to be a uh, you know a little bitch whining about things, but I was just saying, just it just makes things a little bit more difficult to you know all mingle. And I think that's yeah. what the government wants. They don't want us to be able to mingle and pass information along to each other as quickly as possible because they yeah. love absolute sheep. You know, they like controllable people that are all zombies. They're all going to do the same thing, wear their skinny jeans, watch YouTube and fucking don't want to be, uh, you know, uh, charismatic or have any character themselves. They just watch characters and they just, you know, they're never going to be a character themselves. And so they don't want us to report what's going on in New York that's going on over here in LA uh, because if there's riots going there and then it's, it's, uh, you know, you know, the tyrannical government doing this or that, you know, and then they don't want us passing along that information. So that's why the Periscope, you know, got fucking ditched for for real B, you know, Periscope was fire. The first time ever in in like history video wise, I could just join. I could, I used to just look for random streams like in uh, like Dubai, um, over in Europe, I would just I would look for you know how you could look at the map B, and I would just look for random bubbles at any time of night, and I would just see who was going on. Uh, kick kick your Weird. basket likes that skinny jeans comment. These fucking pussies with these skinny jeans fucking kick your basket. I don't even know, bro. Like I'm not even a big dude. I told you I got kind of chicken legs, but I'm telling you, I accidentally put on I I wear Levi's. I actually tried to slide on one of those pair of skinny jeans. Dude, my balls could never, ever, ever get in between the fucking slight wedge that they give you with those things. So I, I don't know, man. These, <laughs> these little cupcake kids, these little fairy tale queers. I don't, I don't know, bro. It's just ridiculous, dude. And I, and I, that's, and that's why I'm here today too. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna talk more shit about how I like to rant about random shit than because I was being all PC, being a little too correct. I know I get wild, but I've never been. You guys have never seen me be full wild. And I'm giving you a little gist of it tonight. You know, the government, they're not <laughs> always your best friend. You want to be self-sustainable. Oh, you want to be self-sustainable yourself, be able to grow food, uh, you know, harvest rainwater, you know, be be self-sustainable, sufficient. They hate they hate that. They don't want you growing vegetables. They don't want me teaching you that. They'll probably cancel me by the end of the show but just for me saying what I've said right here today. But I keep it real, and, you know, it is what it is. I'll deal with that shit later. First fight of the <laughs> night. B for the UFC card after me ranting uh, is Haley Cowan takes on Jamie Lynn Horth. Uh, that's that is a mouthful. Um, yes. So let's see these two chicks. We got uh five, seven versus five, eight. So one inch height advantage for Haley Cowan, 69 inch reach versus 67 inch reach. Uh, so Jay, Haley's got a uh, two, two inch reach advantage as well as that one inch height advantage. Uh, she's also two years younger at 31 versus the 33 years old of Jamie. Um, she's kicked in at the slight underdog at the plus 135 when it opened. Obviously, the numbers can fluctuate as they go, and people bet them plus 170, negative 170 for a slight favorite for Jamie. Um, <laughs> Jamie is undefeated, or it looks like, yeah, five and oh, uh, Canadian fighter, tough girl. She has not, 
she's number one out of Canada, uh, Western Canada, number one out of Canada. So you got to give her a lot of respect, fought at LFA and BFL. Um, she absolutely silences bitches. And I don't say that very often. Rear naked chokes, body kick, uh, rear naked chokes, strikes, punches, and bunches. Just absolutely annihilating hoes like I used to do in high school and fucking on the bed. But neither here nor there. Um, but she doesn't, she hasn't fought the most experienced people. Her last fight was the most experienced fighter, but she fucking handled her. But it took three rounds. Um, that girl was nine, three, and one. Um, I like that the fact that she finishes girls, but she's taking on Haley Cowan. I believe Haley Cowan's, uh, she's not, there's not a lot. She's been here, she's been around for a while. No, let me see that. Yeah. So she fought in the tennis series. Yeah. <clears throat> she fought in the tennis series. She fought in Victor. She fought at LFA. So she, she has been around for a while um, compared to the other girl. But I wouldn't say she's as much of a finisher as this girl. Um, she's ha She does have finishes on her record, but the last one was in 2022, not that long ago. But that girl was 2-0. and oh. Yeah, like, bitch, you should choke a girl out that's 2-0, and oh, you know? like, uh, And so I see why the odds makers have Jamie favorited. Number one out of Canada. She's got a lot of good attributes. I'm going with her, a slight favorite. I think that she's going to showcase uh, for Canada here. But, Mr. B, you tell me. You love uh, you some Canadian bitches. Yeah, I do. I like Canadian fighters, uh, respect respectively. Oh, sorry. Um, it's respectful. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay with what you look, said. Look, look at Army. Mike, squirrel. <laughs> or, <laughs> I'm going to say something, and it's going to sound a little crazy. But uh -oh. here I go. You ready? Uh oh. I don't care for this fight. Oh, that's weird. That's very <laughs> that's, that's that sounds like me usually. And I, I, here, here's what it is. Cowan missed the weight for this fight. She missed weight by a pound and a half. This will be the third time. Well, this will be the second time she's missed the weight. Well, be, she kind of missed weight the last time. She tried to cut weight and got sick. I love you. Then the for, second for, time they tried to make I the love fight, you huh? for remembering those things. She, she, you know what I mean? The first time she was supposed to make her debut, she was supposed to fight that girl. She got sick. The second time around, the opponent pulled out. Now she's back here, and she missed weight by a pound and a half. Jamie Lynn Horth hasn't fought in a year and a half. About a year and a half, I think. That's not good. why. Why be she a little, pregnant? A little over a year. I don't know. She also used to be a one twenty five er last time around. I think. After one time, she fought at one twenty five. For a guy that That's didn't care about time. this fight, be you're kicking some motherfucking knowledge, hoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she got striking ability. But Horth is really good in her grappling. I, I remember that because I've seen her fight. I watched her fight in the LFA, if I remember correctly. Um, she could grapple. She could grapple her ass off. She's really good with her grappling. Um, Cowan, she could crack. She could throw heavy shots. But she don't throw shots often. Her, her striking is still, still needs – it's not refined yet. It's no. still in the growing phases. Major. Her wrestling Major. is still in the growing phases. Um, she, she does be, grind she out opponents. Be, she should be on the OnlyFan pages. All right, that's where she should be. Oh, <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? And uh, and her striking, <laughs> her strike is not all that good. But yeah, she grinds out opponents. She grinds out opponents. She uses wrestling. She's more of, more of a gymnast, so she has more of an athletic ability, but she always fights these slow-paced fights. And they're either unanimous decisions that or they're close decision wins. You know what I mean? Yep. A lot of people are taking Horth. Yo, I, I, I might take Cowan. I might take Cowan. Considering that Cowan has not yet been able to fight, I think How I will take you. Cowan. In some way, shape, or form, the okay. UFC may be silly enough to pass this to get this fight, and this fight might be close to where Cowan probably gets a split decision win. 
You think you think those shady if those shady ass judges keep showing up? Fucking no one knows shit because the, it's so ridiculous how many <laughs> these judges are getting paid off. Oh, people. don't even tell me about that. Last what, week listen, pissed me the fuck off. Why don't the judges? I, the judges should have to literally come to the fucking press post pre, fight press conference and be talked to every time. I don't see why not. What's the big deal? If you're a professional, you should be able to talk about your profession. And that should be like us writing a fucking essay in high school. Bitch, you're getting paid for this? I want to fucking hear, I want to see the essay. And you, just, you don't got to write it. Just speak it. Just tell me what the Seriously. fuck you saw. And or you could just be like, you know what? I was fucking stupid. And I fucked up. And I don't even know yeah. what I was looking at. And, and I, I respect that even. You could tell me that you were watching porn on your phone. You could tell me that you were fucking looking at the ring girl's butt cheeks. You could tell me you were looking at the fucking hot actress. I don't care what. Just tell me you were looking at your phone. I don't mean, just just be more accountable. But they're a bunch of soft, weak ass judges, bro. Piss. They're ruining <laughs> fights. They're ruining fights. Dude. For real, for real. Ruining. And it's been like that for the past two, three cards now, where yeah. there have been fights that have, that have been. You know what I mean? From Macy Barber and KGB Lee to the fucking Kansas. It was the Kansas City card. Yeah. Then the card last week, I think it was. We had at like two point, or three fights the same at way. At this point, Bro, I'm, a shit was the same. Theor- I'm a conspiracy theorist, and I'm saying that they that if they're not fixing it, they're they're in on it. And so there, therefore, judges are being paid. There's some there's a motherfucker getting paid off for them not to be held accountable because people get held accountable usually, you know, B. Yeah. Okay. Weird. Yeah. But with that said, next fight of the night is Journey Newsome takes on Marcus McGee. B, you get to break that down first. Gonna be some black on black crime. That's cool, man. So we taking <laughs> Journey. Well, you we got Journey Newsome. It's not cool. Marcus black on black McGee. crime is not cool. But <laughs> okay, it's not. It's not. It's not cool. It's not all that cool. cool. Sorry, B. Nah, the fight is cool. Yeah, fucking black on black racist crime is not fucking cool. white boy. See this guy? Cancel his uh, show. Ah. <laughs> so we got Journey Newsome, yo. Um, Jenny Newsom. I said Newsom. Uh, 34 <laughs> years old. Hey, He's say, fine. Yeah. Since the words. <laughs> five, five. I usually do. With the, seven, with the 67 and a half inch reach. Um, currently, he's riding a... Well, he lost his last fight against Sergey Mor- uh, Morozov. But he beat uh, Freddy Garcia. He's been one and three in his last four fights. Where he beat Sergey, well, he lost to Sergey. He beat Freddy Garcia, but he lost to Randy Costa and Ricardo Hamos. Um, Nurse Newsom could really strike. He strikes pretty well. Um, he kind of wrestles well. Doesn't wrestle well against people who can wrestle. Yeah. Um, that's his issue. He has a couple TKOs and some submissions under his belt. Um, yeah, pretty good. Roundabout, good, good mix of skills though. Um, but he hasn't really fought like being anybody of like the higher type caliber, but he does fairly well for himself. He's going up against in short notice because he was supposed to fight Brian Kelleher, but Kelleher pulled out. He's fighting the maniac, Marcus McGee. Now, some people don't know Marcus McGee. I managed to get to watch two fights this week with Marcus McGee. Marcus McGee has never been knocked out. This dude's a He's sad. never lost by decision. He's lost one time by submission. And that was back in July of 2022, last year. And he's a big dude for the weight class. He's a big guy. That's why this is a catch weight of 140. Ooh. Um, they, yes. they, they, hey, Newsom, Newsom's about to catch a beat on me, baby. A lot of all his wins are by knockout or technical knockout. But he is a product of the MMA lab. That is a big deal. Because <laughs> you know who's there in the MMA lab. We got dudes like Benson Henderson. Smooth. You know what I mean? Yeah, Smooth Henderson. And we have, you know, the the, the big coaches, you know, uh, if I remember his crowd. Well, they were one. They are also one of the first camps that like it have scientific like uh, like food nutrition and stuff like that going on. I'll be. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, we got John Crouch out there who does good things there. Um, Chris Grutzmacher and all, all those other dudes, man. We have Rick Story. A lot of guys have come from that uh 
camp there. Pretty good, pretty good uh, mix of skills there. Six and one dude. He's managed to fight some okay competition. Not, not nothing big, nothing big. Um, but he also has a amateur career. He was three and two in his amateurs, and now he's six and one as a pro. You know, and he's fought equal level the opposition compared to his record. Um, you're probably going here. Look to bang on Newsom. Newsom tends to stand up a lot. Well, he tends to try to strike with you. And if not, he's going to implement some wrestling. But, you know, a guy like McGee coming in on short notice. But uh, catch weight, he'll be all right. He ain't have to cut much weight. That's going to be a thing. And what he has his tutelage in the MMA lab. I'll probably see an upset here. I could probably yes. see an upset. I could probably see an upset going on. Yes, here. B. Yes. Are you go, you I'll going probably, with McGee? I probably I'll probably pick McGee. I'll I'm, I'm pick going McGee. I'm going with McGee 100. percent I just want to know if you're going with McGee because I'm fired up. I'm I'm gonna take McGee. I think That's I'll take I, McGee. I think I McGee think. can make an upset. Could get an upset I, going. I think All he, he has can. to do is just defend the takedowns. I don't think Newsom, he, Newsom has if, a decent takedown game, uh, wrestling game, but it's, I don't think it's that strong. If Newsom, um, sh- like, gets shown any adversity at all, he folds, B. He, he gets put on his back. He's not the same dude at all, you know? Yeah. And so I, I absolutely love this one. This is So this is one of the fights that I like the odds. I like the bet. Um, I'm going to be throwing down $100, throwing one unit down on Marcus McGee, the maniac, to do his thing versus Journey Newsom. Um I just think that for the the I mean you get we're getting plus one fifty negative one ninety for Journey Newsom, uh we we're getting the size of three inches bigger three, uh, three like three inches of reach advantage he's strong he's not been finished I mean not that Newsom's really like a KO finisher at all but this is no, one of the no. times I think that it's worth the fire and, and I'm glad that Mister B agrees because I was feeling the tinglys on that one. The next fight of the night, B, is between Stephanie Egger takes on Irina Alexeva. And that sounds like the most Russian porn star bitch you ever did search, okay? And don't pretend like you've never searched some fucking sick shit like that, all right? Because I know I you got all kinds of sick shit in there. Some, some BBC, be black on white, all kinds of weird shit. So don't fucking get me started. But uh, with this fight here, this is we got ste- we got Irene Irina. Um, it's been a while, it, y'all. It's been a while. Hey, it's been a while. I, hey, I figured I'd go off. I, I I said to myself, I'm just gonna go off. There's more point. Like, what's the? There was no point. Like, it's like you you damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like, they're not gonna like because in the beginning, like they're not gonna sponsor you. They're not gonna like you. I don't like you if you don't like me. So how about that? You know, fuck Word. you, fuck you. How about that? Uh, so. But uh, with that said, uh, Irina versus Stephanie Egger here. Um, Irina, <clears throat> let me hold, sorry. Irina, the Russian Ronda, she calls herself. Um, she's coming in yeah. as the underdog here. She's 4-1, and one, not a ton of experience, 32 years old, 5'8", with a 66-inch reach on a one-fight win streak. Um, she's, she, uh, man, she, there's just no experience. She's fought in Bellator one time. She won. Uh, she won a unanimous decision versus Stephanie Page, who was 5-2. That was probably her the, the toughest opponent she's ever faced. Then another girl before that, she lost to a, a decision. Um, she has some an arm bar. She uh, an arm bar. I thought I thought I saw a refusal to fight because of her. Um, I'm seeing why that she's a underdog here versus a girl like Stephanie Egger. She just lacks a lot of experience. Uh, Stephanie Egger, who is an eight and three, she's 34 years old, 5'6", 68 inch reach. Um, she got a judo base. She's, you know, fought to me a lot tougher competitors. But B, she has tapped one time to armbar versus Boyna Silva recently, which I don't really like to see. Um, what, what, what's I the, the Russian's a striker, right? B, you know anything about her? Yeah, you know, she got one win by an armbar. Her opponent quit mid fight. A couple decisions. Yeah, I don't I'm know. I'm not hyped about this. Yeah, this is this, this is like the worst fight I've ever seen. Um, then, I, then on top of that, she missed weight by four pounds today. Oh, oh wow! So she really scared. 
Well, you know, <laughs> like I said, the veteran versus the newcomer is one of my rules. I don't give a no. fuck about the fight. Um, we're going to take uh, Edgar. I'm going Edgar. We're yeah, both we're going Edgar, Edgar, I guess. Yeah, we're going Edgar. Yeah. We don't care about it. And the, I we'll can't believe Edgar. that. I can't believe that Edgar is that big of a favorite, though. That's gross. I would never and bet here's that the life. craziest. Here's the, here's the even more craziest shit about this. She fought at 125 before. And she missed the weight coming in at 129. That's weird. So she's moving up to 135, and she missed the weight. Yo, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell? That's so, so odd, yeah, man. I'm definitely sticking with Edgar on this one, man. Well, like, <laughs> we're, we're both going Edgar on that one. I would never – I can't bet or parlay that. I would never do that because she's it's too much money for a girl that I don't care about. Yeah. So I don't recommend touching that at all. But the next fight of the a fight of the prelims will be an actual really good fight between two people. Not a lot of people might know, but the fight should be phenomenal. B gets to break it down first. It's between Cody Durden takes on Charles Johnson, and this should yeah. be good. I'm stoked for this B. This is going to be a really good fight at 125, ladies and gentlemen. Energy uh, Charles Johnson man versus the the man of the hour Cody Durden. Now, this is an interesting fight. Cody Durden is 14, 4, and 1. 32 years old, a representative of American top team. Um, currently running a two-fight win streak, 5-7 with the 67-inch reach advantage. He has six wins by KOTKO, five wins by submission, three by decision. This man is a gritty wrestler. He's thrown some hands his last couple fights, but his wrestling, pretty damn good. Um, his two fight win streak based on him being Carlos Mota and then stopping JP Bays in a minute, and eight seconds in the first round. He did lose to Mohamed Mokayev, got bum rushed. Alorki Lang, Arichi Lang, he beat by unanimous decision. And Jimmy Flick, he lost to with that triangle choke. God damn, that triangle choke was sick. Uh-huh. Other than that, he had a really good uh, string of wins um, before coming to the UFC. A lot of joints by uh, submission and, uh, yeah, some TKOs. He had one by a slam, which is pretty impressive. Yo, gritty as hell. The boy's gritty. But energy Charles Johnson, man. 13 and 4 is this, man. Uh, 32 years old, 5'9", 70-inch reach. So he has the reach advantage. Represent Tiger Muay Thai, but he's at another gym, too, a jiu-jitsu gym. Oh, Mercy Lago MMA, that's right. They say he's training with Tiger Muay Thai. Um, he's never been submitted or knocked out. That is a good stat. Yeah. Um, but he has decision losses, four losses by decision. But he's knocked out five, or technically knocked out, submitted four, and has four wins by decision. He's two and two in his last four, though. He lost to Ode Osborne by split decision, beat Jimmy Flick. First round, I was totally shocked by that. Yeah. Zalga Zumagulov split decision win. I don't know how I feel about that one, but he got it. They gave it to him. And his debut was against Mohamed Mokayev, where he lost by unanimous decision. But he managed to wear off a lot of the takedowns and stay in the, in the fight for three rounds. But if you notice, this man has had four fights, and it has not been about... No, it hasn't been a year yet. It hasn't even really been. The last four fights he's had, let's see, July, November, January, February. Damn, a lot. Short time. Yeah. Short time for these fights. That's one of the things I'm worried about. He's taking a lot of these time, these fights in a short time. He's doing that Cerrone thing. And while that's yeah. pretty cool, you seen what it did to Cerrone. It kind of messed beat Cerrone that, up. Beat you know that body I mean? up. Yeah. And that's what had me worried. Ode Osborne went in there. He fought him. They fought. And he got tired. And Ode managed to wrestle him. That's not bueno, man. And he's going in here against a dude who can wrestle. 
or they just try to wrestle. Durden can wrestle. And for that reason, I'm taking Cody Durden. Oh, you're gross. <laughs> I, can't believe, I can't believe you right now. I'm oh. taking Cody Durden. God damn you, Pete. Oh, <laughs> man. And so because of the wrestling? It's that aspect and the fact that he's taken a lot of these fights in the short time. Hmm. I don't like I feel, that. I feel like his takedown, Charles, I feel like Charles' takedown defense is getting better and his get up game's decent, no? It is true. It is true. But Durden's pressure and again, those takedowns, man, is something true. else. So you're you're banking on uh, Durden's American wrestling, chain chain wrestling up against the cage nonstop. And wearing and not even giving him a chance to like breathe. Yep. Okay. Yep. That can happen very easily. That's 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 like his his that's how he's gonna win if he wins for sure. I just I I kind of like the athleticism of Charles Johnson. I like his striking a lot. Um, yeah, that's gonna be the worrisome part. Yeah, that's gonna be the worrisome part if he could time the takedown attempts from Cody, or he could just keep Cody at bay with the jabs. If yeah, you can keep so, Gordy at bay with jabs and uh, kicks, rangy kicks, then he'll be good money. But yeah. I'm taking That's Cody because Cody's a tough son of a bitch, man. He is, man. He's got a good cardio too and stuff. But, man, I I just lately, man, these strikers that have been dishing off on people. And so I don't, I don't – yeah. I'm going to go – I'm going with Charles Johnson. I've been – I was feeling it. I feel like he, he – I feel like he can improve enough where if he could keep this fight standing – then he could he could possibly win this thing, but because Mr. B brought up so many good points, I mean, like I said, Durden could easily uh, probably sm maybe smother for three rounds. Might not be the prettiest thing, but it could happen, you know. Oh. And so, yeah. with that said, you want to you want to bet that with caution. Um, I'm not betting that one. Yes, yes, I'm yes. Do not that. betting with that one for the show, but that will be a really good fight to watch on the prelims. Um, since I'm not, we don't have a lot of fights that are very good. And the yeah. next one is absolutely just, just like Jake Collier takes on Martin. Hold Bidet. on, Mike. Give me a minute. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. You yeah, go yeah. ahead and talk. I'll be right back. No, no worries. Yeah. So uh, Jake Collier is taking on Martin Bidet. And if you haven't looked up Jake Collier, I mean, he used to be, I believe, a 185 pound fighter. And now he's fighting out of 265 pounds. And he is the most gummy bear shape you have ever seen ever and i'm like i'm not i don't care if you're big but like it's very like unhealthy big at uh just the rapid rate that he gained weight so either way he's taking on martin boudet here um both these guys are or so we got one guy 34 jake collier 31 years old from martin boudet so three years older for jake collier we got the reach advantage for jake collier at an inch and a half even though he's an inch and a half smaller Jake Collier is 6'3", 6'4", for Martin Bidet. Um, Martin Bidet is on a, a major win streak, though. So it's like, man, Jake, I don't know how, why Jake's taking this fight because I just, this doesn't look good right at all, right off the bat. But I'm going to try to be, you know, try to try to see what, what's going on. 13 and 8, 34 years old, 6'3", like 78 and a half inch reach. on two-fight losing streak, like I said. Uh, so Chris Barnett, the gummy bear, my boy, ground and pounded him round two. That shit was phenomenal. We bet it here. Absolutely love Chris Barnett, um, beast boy. And so um, Andre Arlovsky lost his split decision. Chase Sherman, uh, he beat Rene Kachuk round one. He's, he's tough. I, I He's got decent hands for like maybe five minutes. That That is Jake Collier. Um I can't believe how big he is. I thought he was small, shorter, but he's six foot three. So, I mean, can't even hate. So he's taking Martin Bidet, who's his baddies, eleven and one, uh, five foot or ten, ten fight win streak. Uh, most of his fights win by KO. Last took on uh, Brzezinski, he won the split decision. Uh, won at Chris Barnett, he won technical decision, which is obviously impressive since he beat Collier and a few other people. Uh, Lorenzo Hood, knee to the head, round one. Um, dude's a finisher. I mean, he could do it on the ground or uh, punt standing. So he's got a Kimura on his record. He's got some, uh, but mostly it seems like punches, standing knees, knees to the body and stuff like that. I just feel like he's going to get um, Jake Collier in the clinch and, and land just some massive knees to the 
wide body of Jake Collier, and it's just not going to be that good for him. Uh, I, I just well, let me let me just check out the odds, and the odds aren't the odds are even. So I if I felt like Jake Collier has no chance, he has plenty of chance. The odds makers have it just right down the pipe. Um, man, I'm going with Martin Boudet. Definitely, you know, so I I do not like this fight because of Jake Collier, and so I don't even know. I'm hoping B has something better to say about these two. But, Mr. B, who do you have here? I'm going Boudet over Collier, but I just don't like Collier, B. This is gross. Uh, uh, so this one has given me a little bit of a headache, man. Between Boudet and Collier, honestly, Boudet is good, but Boudet doesn't have strong – doesn't have – High output. That's the thing. He doesn't have a high output with his no, strikes. No. But he hasn't been finished. His one loss came by decision. And that was against Juan Espino years ago. Like his second fight ever. Juan's tough though. Yeah. Um, other than that, all his other fights have been pretty good. He has the, the ability to wrestle pretty well. Um, as I mentioned, not that much of a high output. His last fight, I think he threw pretty good towards the end of the round, the end of the fight. So he kind of won that one. Um, other than that, good submission skills when he's on the ground. You know what I mean? But that's his thing. He, he, he pretty much works you against the cage, gets the takedowns, works on the ground. But it's just the output. Kavier, though... Bro, Kali is not bad, man. But, you know, the record says otherwise. He's 2-4 and four in his last six fights. <laughs> He's okay. currently riding a two-fight well, losing B, streak. B, you missed where... it. You missed one. So, the reason why I'm so disgusted with Collier is he used to be a middleweight, right, B? Yeah, if I remember, he was like a middleweight or a light and, heavyweight. And, and yeah. so he, he gained so much weight so fast. I just, that's why I hated on him. So that's why I wanted you to, you know, hear that. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's the, that's the thing with him, though. Yeah, he was the prototype and he was pretty good. He was pretty in shape. Then all of a sudden, man, that dude just got big and he said, fuck it, I'm going to just fight as a heavyweight. Yeah, well, and, it's just fine. It's just fine. Just so it was so weird to see him jump weight classes so fast. Yeah, and go from like that built solid body to yeah, as being a big boy. Man. I mean, like watching like <laughs> Luke Rockhold all of a sudden be up at two sixty five, you know? Yeah. So you know, other than he beat John Volante and Chase Sherman, Chase Sherman, you know how we feel about Chase Sherman on this side. Jeez. You know, he lost to Tom Ospinal, where Carlos Felipe beat him by a split decision, which was close. It was a close fight, but Andre Olavsky beat him by a split decision, but. You know, a lot of people thought that um, he won, that Collier won that fight. But it's that Chris Barnett fight that had me weird because he won the first round, then through a mistake and being tired, Barnett managed to take the position and beat him. Boudet could do the same thing. Does Boudet got to just manage to wrestle? Collier got punches, but Collier don't really – he don't seem to be the KO puncher. So, yeah, man. So, I'm just going to say, you know what I mean? I'll take Boudet then. I'll take Boudet. Oh, nice. I'm I'll see him to you. take Boudet. I thought that you were going to fucking pick Collier. What's up, TJ? TJ on here. What's up, TJ? How you doing, bro? Oh, that new look. What, my my my, my Harley hair? Are you talking about the long, the lo- the curls for the girls? Is that what you're talking about, bro? It's either the Harley hair or the background, yeah. one of the two. It's it, it, well, either way, the curls for the girls are the Harley hair. See that? Uh, I had to cut these bit. I had to cut these bitches for my boy's wedding, uh, like a eight year, eight months ago. Um, his his uh, lady's family was Italian, and they were like, "We can't have you with that biker hair. We got to cut that." And I was like, "All right, you're lucky. I love you guys. I'll cut the fucking locks, bro. Remember fucking my my lock? You know how long it'd be yeah. right now, B? I'll fucking be uh." I'm about to go Red, get a mullet. Man. I'm about to go get a mullet like Theo Vaughn. Uh, you fucking clean. <laughs> I think it'll you gotta get a Theo Vaughn mullet. Oh, I think shit. so. I think I think that I did, I think that I could rock it, and I, I'll pull that shit off. I think you could. But, I think you. But I'm off. also scared though, because I'm like, damn, I take so long to get it so thick, bro. You know, it's fucking. There's people who can't even grow a, a shred of hair. You know what I mean? 
Oh, Word. the porn star. Yeah, that's you know. And fuck, hey, you you just you gotta like you gotta like manifest what you want, you know. And I want Word. to eat the putty. Want to eat the putty? So I got the stash, got the hair Word. for the girls. Yeah, that's what you gotta got do. The, Harley, you gotta the fucking Harley's, the vibrator. Bzz, 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 all that's on. What them, you gotta bro. do is you gotta get yourself that mullet and that Vince Pichel. Oh, mustache, man. <laughs> <laughs> Vince, Vince, Vince is from here, and that's a little extreme. I don't even, I don't know if I can handle that one. Um, but I, I definitely, my dad always had a mustache, and I've, I've always liked that. Uh, that old, that just that old school, just fucking American, just look from back in the days. Our dads, you know. Yeah. With that short, like short thigh, fucking, uh, you know, swim trunks on, fucking looking like men, and uh, so not those fucking oh, skinny yeah. jeans. Crazy, but uh, either way, next fight of the night. Mike's tired on these skinny jeans. Bro. God damn, skinny <laughs> jeans fucking killing me, bro. Below little fucking nah, no, soft no, ass no. little snowflake kids wearing these things, fucking little nah, emu, man. fucking emo little boys, bro. Nah. Uh, the next fight of the night is between Josh Quinlan takes on Trey Waters. B, you gotta break that B down first. Let's go, man. So, ladies and gentlemen, we got a welterweight fight here. Trey Waters makes his debut. Yes, sir. The LFA, the current <laughs> um, LFA welterweight champion. Trey the Truth Waters, seven and one, six foot five. Yes, sir. With the 77 inch reach, 28 years old. Representing, uh, what is this? What's this joint? Uh, Ludus MMA. Um, yeah. 6'5 with the 77 inch reach. Hey, that's Army crazy. Vet, Army vet, I will rock a speedo like no one's business, bro. Oh, and fuck this fucking just, guy. I'll put this German thick dick all over that shit. Because <laughs> Army vet's problem. He he brought it up. Fuck man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, yo, check this out. So. Both these dudes, man. Um, well, yeah. Trey for, tried out on the Contender Series. I forgot who it was that dropped out. He managed to get in, but he got finished by Gabriel Bonfim. Um, and last season's tough. I mean, the last season's bro- Contender Series. The yeah, when both the brothers were on the show. Yeah. He got finished. Um, but after that fight, he fought Jalen Fuller. And he finished him. He got the he got the KO punch. One before that, he got a lot of wins by uh, submission. He had one where he got a knee. He caught dude with a knee. I think it was a third round knee in the clinch. Um, he had a guillotine choke, a couple decisions, submissions. Take out pretty T- good stuff. Take out TJ. Good we'll stuff. see you soon. All right, Let bro. He had good fights in the amateurs. He had good fights in the pros. Um. He's good, but it's just that that height. The height thing kind of scares me, man. Um, but but he's going up against Josh Quinlan. Josh Quinlan is six and zero. Oh. Now y'all know already how we feel about Josh Quinlan. Tough as fuck. Bushido Josh Quinlan, out of Milestone Martial Arts, Let's who's go. thirty years old, six foot tall with the seventy two inch reach. He's on a 12-fight win streak. He has not yet been finished. He got four wins by KO, TKO, two by submission. When he connects, it is over. This man has, what is it, the six wins straight in the amateurs, all by KO. Then he mixed it up as a pro with the submissions and the KOs. He showed up in his debut against Jason Witt. He knocked out Jason Witt in two minutes, nine seconds. The Logan Urban fight, he beat that dude on the Contender Series 2021. He beat that dude in 47 seconds. Mauled this motherfucker. KO'd him stiff. Yeah. But then they turned into a no contest because he popped. He popped for PEDs. But it was light, and then they let him go. Josh Quinlan is a menace. Um... And this one, I'm taking Quinlan. Uh, he said, Army Vet said, Mike <laughs> and B, you two remind me of Night at the Roxbury. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? You know what? You know what's funny, uh, Army Vet? Is that I'm not even gonna lie. When my, when, uh, 
when I bust the nut, when I bust the nut with my lady, I, I go, I literally go, and I was like, Emilio, <laughs> like I but I scream that <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all right, like it's hilarious. So, like I've been like up ten years, and I'll go, and I was like, Emilio, <laughs> I scream that shit. It's hilarious. So it's funny you said that. What? I, I'm not even joking. My lady, my lady would be pissed I said that, but that's the truth. Jesus Christ. Bro, it's just so perfect to break that odd moment when you're like, and I was like, Amelia. <laughs> oh. oh my God. Oh, I love it. But yo, man. All right, TJ, man. But yo, I'm taking Quinlan on this one. Trey does have the reach. Trey does have the height, but Quinlan is fast. I don't like big. I don't like tall dudes fighting somewhat shorter dudes, especially dudes who could punch. Their chins are out there to get hit. I don't like Trey's defense either. That's why I'm going to take Quinlan. I think Quinlan's too fast. Quinlan's too sharp with the hands, and I think even though Trey Waters got reach, I think. Quinlan just marches right through all that and lands his shots, puts this guy away. Another first round finish for Josh Quinlan. Uh, that's exactly how I feel, B, and I love that you feel the same because it makes me even more confident to throw down the bed on the money line. Right now, the odds makers have it at 175, negative 175, so we're down now 1.75 units um, on him. Uh, Trey, Trey Waters, the slight underdog. I just don't think that he's ready for this uh, smoke show that he's about to get, but He's a big ass dude, Trey Waters, huh, B? Yes, he is. 6'5, man. That's Holy a dumb, tall ass kid for Walter Wade, man. Like, like God, like goddamn, motherfucker. You better calm down yeah. over there, tall one. But yeah, so that should be a good fight. <laughs> that should be a good fight, B. And I I we both love some Josh Quinlan. I think it's a perfect opportunity versus a per, like a opponent with not too crazy of experience that he could yeah. like showcase his name a little bit, you know? Yep. So, Definitely. with that said, the next fight of the night will be between, be between Waldo Cortez Acosta versus Marco Rodrigo de Lima. Is this a big, is this a heavyweight? There's a bunch of heavyweights on this card? What the fuck, dude? It's kind of kind of weird. Um, so, we got, uh, we'll go with de, de Lima. has been around forever. 28 and 1, uh, 37 years old, 6 foot 1, 75 inch reach on a one fight win streak. Uh, fights out of American top team, one of his best attributes. Um, he won by rear naked choke versus Andre Arlovsky last time out. Um, then he lost to Black and Ivanov, and he beat Ben Rothball punches. Marcus Green, Maurice Green, sorry. Uh, lost to Romanov choke, which I don't like. Lost to choke arm triangle. Lost to Von Flu choke. So he, he's a tapper, I'll tell you that. Holy shit. Um, does not like to be put on the ground at all. And so he's taking a Waldo Costa, uh, a, a Waldo Cortez Acosta, who's nine and zero, calls himself Salsa Boy, six foot four, seventy and eight inch reach on eleven fight win streak. If you count his amateur career, um, this dude is absolutely sick. Uh, KO TKOs, uh, does win a lot of decisions, which I, I'm not the the most fond of. One Chase Sher beat Chase Sherman versus the decision last time out. Ben Jared Van Derrero to beat decision last time out as well. But one before that. Uh, contender series is where he, he paved his way. He, he won by punches. Oh, man. The only thing I don't like is the fact he just doesn't have a lot of experience. But um, I, I like I like uh, Waldo Acosta, Waldo Cortez Acosta in this one, B. Um, he's a slight underdog. I know they have uh, Marcus DeLima as the favorite. But I, I just can't throw my money down on DeLima. So I got to go dog or pass here. But the experience factor, I guess, for Mark, for Delima, De could be big. But I just don't in heavyweight fighting. I, I just don't feel like uh, betting more than uh, pick them in the sense for that fight. Be but dog or pass. What do you say, B? Yeah, I agree with you on this one, man. It is dog or pass here. Um, not for nothing. Uh, for Jerry Delima, he is good. Uh, you know, we've seen the last couple fights he's had. He's he got the KOs now. He's lining up his his striking, kind of charges in a little bit, tries just to throw these big punches. He's nothing really. He managed well. He knocked out. Uh, technically stopped. 
um, who is it? Rothwell. Yep. And then, you know, he beat Arlovsky. But, you know, those guys are a little older. Rothwell yeah. older, and he has a damn lengthy history of fights. Andre Arlovsky is older, you know, but he has a lengthy history of fights. But this man lost to Bogor Ivanov. <laughs> and he lost to, you know what I mean? You know, Ivanov was out for a bit. Ivanov came back, and Ivanov managed to handle him on the wrestling aspect. Now, Rogerio does have jujitsu. I think he's a solid jujitsu uh, practitioner. I think so, if I remember correctly. Um, yep. He got some, some wins by submission. Uh, but and he has big power, but uh, Acosta's hands, man. I like Acosta's hands. I think Acosta's hands are a lot better. I think his technique is a lot better. Uh, and his head's going to come down. His head's more in the game. Delima seems like he's going to retire any minute. You know what I mean? Um, Warley, I just like Warley's boxing. And if he can manage to keep this fight standing, which, you know, Vandera did take him down, but then he managed to defend those takedowns and keep this fight standing. I think he could do the same thing against Delima. So, yeah, it's dog or pass in this one. Nice. Dog or pass. I yeah, think I got- you know, if Wiley could come in and just light up, light him up early, then boy, it's problematic. But yeah, this is a dog or pass situation. Well, I'm glad that you agree because I was like, I mean, this one just, I really, another one, there's a lot, there's some, there's a few that I just don't care about. Mr. B seems to be getting a little bit better of the bouts to break down first. Like this next one, Giuliani Rosa takes on Fernando Padilla B. This should be decent. What do you say about this one? Oh, this one's fun, man. Yep. Um, Fernando Padilla, the gamer, bro. I like this kid. Yeah, this kid is dope. Um, I don't know this how he's gonna do here. Sleeper fight. He's here. Gonna, yeah, he's gonna bro. He's gonna brawl for sure. But Fernando Padilla, twenty six years old, six foot one with the seventy six inch reach, representing Juarez, Mexico, man. Um, he got this gym. I don't know what about this gym, but. Four wins by KOTKO, about eight of those by submission. Yeah, eight of those by yeah, submission. Two by decision. He's only lost by decisions. He has never been knocked out or subbed. So that means he is coming in with ill intentions. This is going to be a good fight. His last loss was against Spike Carlisle. Okay. Spike Carlisle's in Bellator right now. But Spike Carlisle's a tough hombre, too. He beat the dude Cameron Graves with an elbow a minute 19 in round two um, in Fury FC. And he beat Nate Richardson. Uh, split decision. He lost to Carlisle, but beat a dude by the name of Darnold, uh, Donald Sanchez, whose record was fucking 30 and 19. Jesus Christ. By leg kick and punches. And beat a dude by the name of Fard Muhammad, who was six. And <laughs> oh, fuck, he was six and ten. What the fuck is this, that? This rest, but this record is so suspect. Though, be sucks. But he got some guys that he's fought. A couple guys he's fought in his at his level or a little below. He did lose to Dan Ige when Ige was about five and one. That's he fucking beat, crazy. He beat Derek Minner. Yeah, what the fuck? That's wild. Damn, that's no, wild. This, Where, this, is, yo, this is an underrated record we got here. This kid, this, underrated? Kid, this kid's been around. What Dan Ige? He, Dan Ige is his first loss? Like, that's wild. Bro. Bro. That's why I said this is going to be a fun fucking fight. The, but, uh... <laughs> yeah. yo, yo, this is going to be a good one. But, yeah, we got Juicy J. Julian Arosa, man. Um... I just know Padilla is a gamer. He's as game as they come, but I never really quite looked at the record. But yeah, man, Juicy J's 33, 6'1, 74 and a half inch reach, representing Extreme Couture. Currently, well, he just lost his last fight, but he's never been submitted. 11 wins by KOTKO, 12 by submission, 5 by decision. He's been knocked out or technically knocked out, though, six times and lost four decisions. Last fight he lost to Alex Caceres. Yes. 
He got finished by Caceres. That was the last fight I thought I was upset about. But he beat Dawadu. He beat Dawadu. He beat Peterson. He beat Charles Jordan. But he lost to Sung Woo Choi. He beat Nate Landwehr. He beat Sean Woodson. He beat AJ Bryant. But then he lost to RCA Dawson and Devontae Smith. Everybody's on, see, Iro- everybody's on Erosa like it's a lock. It's weird. I think it's a little iffier than that. I think so too, man. But Erosa does have the experience. That's the one I, thing. And that's what I got. And you know my rule, so that sucks. Yeah. Erosa has the he has the experience and he's fought a lot cleaner. He does test that chin though a little too much, but he's managed to, you know what I mean, show his durability at times in these past couple fights. Um and his striking has improved quite a bit. His movement, his defensive movement has improved a bit as well. I think he takes this kid in the deep waters and he gets the win here. I'll take Arosa. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's like yeah, I've disrespected Erosa before, and this just don't seem like the moment where you want to disrespect him. I feel like he's got too much experience. This dude's tough. I feel like he has the mental edge now. Erosa does. I mean, he's changed so much uh, since we watched him. You know, B. Yeah, man. Yeah, he's he's, he's got more mature <laughs> and, in these fights. And so I'm going with Erosa too. I think the experience factor. You know, I have the dog or, or the veteran versus the newcomer all day. Um, I almost feel like this is worthy of a bet even. So I'm going to be picking Julian Erosa uh, versus Fernando. I feel like that this is a chance, decent odds um, that the negative 150 mark, and uh, you could cash that bet there with that one. So the next fight of the night is between Cody Brundage takes on Rodolfo Vieira. This is going to be a, a very strange one, uh, right? We got the BJJ black belt of Rodolfo Vieira versus uh, American wrestler originally with Cody Brennan, right? Would be yep, correct. So correct. We're gonna find out if Vieira's gas tank can hold, if uh, wrestling uh, versus jujitsu. I mean, the striking, I mean, I, I'd have to say Cody Brennan for the possibly have better striking, but the BJJ of Rodolfo Vieira, it, the fact that he could get him on his back. Let's just check out Cody Brundage's record here. He's eight and three, 28 years old, 26 foot, 72 inch reach on a one fight losing streak. I'm looking for any submission losses. Uh, if he does have any of those, that's going to be my biggest uh, problems because, you know, uh, he's got a loss versus old Je- uh, McCall, old Zolchek, punches and hammer fists round one. Um, so obviously he was on his back, and as the wrestlers don't like to be, and that's that's a sign that he could be on his back. Uh, he lost to William Knight, elbows to the ground and pound. Probably not a good idea versus a guy like Rodolfo Vieira. Um, I mean, this seems like a bad, a really bad fight for Cody Brundage. Uh, he is slight underdog plus 190. I got to go over Rodolfo Vieira, and I think that possibly give uh, Cody Brundage his first submission loss even be. I know he hasn't had one, but I don't think he's been on the ground with a guy as such world class as jiu-jitsu as a guy that, like Rodolfo Vieira. But I do not like the gas tank of Vieira or the striking. So it's fucking – I'm not betting this ever. I don't recommend you do. I'm picking Riviera. B, what do you have to say about this one? I'm a little iffy on this one. Right? You brought up some good points. <laughs> I like to bring up a point of my own. Chris Curtis. Chris Curtis for Rodolfo Vieira. Yep. Chris Curtis managed to defend 21 takedowns. On Rodolfo Vieira. Worst deep, worst wrestling ever. Because of that showing, when Rodolfo Vieira's UFC record, yep. they now show that he has absorbed 5.09 strikes a minute. Ooh. That is crazy. Molly. Won. All because of that Chris Curtis fight. Because he the Curtis defended and Curtis beat him up on the feet. Yep. Bad. Bad. What we've seen from Rodolfo Vieira is that Rodolfo Vieira, as you like to say, is the hammer cool. When he's not the when he's a nail, problems. Oh, big time. Yo, that happened when he fought Fluffy, Fluffy Hernandez. That oh, gas that tank happening. disappeared horribly. <clears throat> Cody Brundage has an opportunity here. 
And that's only if he defends these takedowns and keeps Vieira on the stand-up. Can he defend those takedowns? A lot, though? I don't know. Vieira's very, very dangerous with his grappling. He did, you know what I mean? Brundage did knock out Trayshawn Gore. But then again, he got knocked out with Mahal Olin Shuzik. And uh, when was the last time he got subbed, you said? He didn't get subbed. Uh, oh, he never been he never, subbed. No. I don't think that's he's what ever I, been I subbed, think no. that I just, I don't see a lot of people that with that experience on the ground. Like, you know? Yeah. He beat Dolce. He beat Trey Sean. He lost to Michael Olin Zuzik. Nick Maximoff managed to grapple him up. And that's my that's another worry I have too. Yeah. I may stick and take Rodolfo on this one. Yeah. I'm gonna take Rodolfo. Yeah, it's just I'll there's not, Rodolfo. There's it's not enough Rodolfo to go, could work. That's all they gotta do. Yeah, there's just not enough to warrant the other way. And just Vieira's jujitsu game is so sick. It could just take one round and where they're not sticky, not wet, and he finally gets that one takedown B, you know. Yeah. Um, and wrestlers hate being on their back. So, but either way, I'm not betting that. I don't even recommend that you touch that either. Next fight of the night is a co main event. B, you get to break it down first. It's between Kyle Barallo takes up McCall or Uh I might have bias on this one. Let's <laughs> see how we go. That's so funny. So, let's go. You got the co main event here, man. Uh, middleweight, the natural Kyle Barallo. Who's 13 and 1 right now out of fighting nerds? That's an interesting camp. You guys should check that out. Um, he's 30 years old, 6'1 with the 75 inch reach. All those motherfuckers are geniuses. They're legit geniuses. And they're geniuses in their fight game, but other things as well. They all got like different ventures and freaking uh classes and you know I mean shit that they take they legit have like degrees and shit they're smart Some of those yeah. guys yeah it's really they're like, like the, living up they're to like the, the Wu Tang they're like the Wu Tang clan of fucking fighting <laughs> <laughs> yo for real for real yeah, the Wu Tang was smart yeah. four wins by KOTKO three by submission six by decision he's only lost one fight by decision and that was back and damn that was his second fight Jao Carvalho beat him back in 2015. Uh, Other than that, yeah, he lost to Almeida, but that was that submission circus. And, you know, if you got time, check those out. I actually had a chance to a little while back. Not bad. Um, But, yeah, Mahmoud Muradov, he beat that dude by unanimous decision. Armin Petrosian beat him by unanimous decision. But the Petrosian fight was a little ugly, but he did beat him, though. Gadzi Omar Gadziev, he beat him by a technical decision. Um, Omar Gadziev, kind of if that dude, I don't know, that guy is so sketchy. Um, he beat Jesse Murray on the contender series. Um, but the top when he got on top, uh, beat him up with uh, with strikes, TKO. Aaron Jeffrey, he beat by unanimous decision. That's how that was the contender series during that week. Yeah, he was on the contender series twice. High level IQ mixes up the game. I wish he would be a lot more aggressive and look for finishes, but he does pretty good on the grappling aspect, using his jujitsu to get control, work to rack up points. Just want him to get more aggressive on the ground and in the stand up, man. That's all it is. He does throw big kicks, but calculated kicks, tries to cut his opponents off just so he could get the wrestling going in there. A little bit of jujitsu on the ground. He does things good. Not much holes, but there are some times where he kind of messes up. But he catches, you know what I mean? He catches himself and corrects his wrongs in mid-fight. Now, my bias is going to show. Here I go. <laughs> his opponent is a guy I talk about on here a lot. The Lord. Mikhail Oleksushik. Hossar. Yes. I thought he 18 was Lord, and 5. I thought he was nicknamed Lord Olzechek. Was that just an, another nickname? Um, No, I think that's what Hussar means. Oh, okay. Never yeah. Right. Well, you're Retard. right. Retard. Out of Poland, 
out of Poland. Yeah, it was Lord. Yeah, I think it was Lord. Okay. Yeah, but then he just right. called it. He searched it up to Hussar. No worry. I just want to make but sure. Yeah. All good. Representing Poland. Um, 28 years old, six foot tall with the 74 inch reach. Representing what's this joint? Ankos MMA Boznan. There you go. Um, currently riding a two fight win streak. 13 wins by KLTKO, one win by submission, four by decision. He's been technically knocked out once, submitted three times, and has one decision loss. The last time he's been knocked out was all the way, was his first ever knockout loss. His only knockout loss was in 2014. Other than that, it's kind of iffy, man. Um, he's four and three in his last seven, but he has a two fight win streak where he beat Cody Brundage by punches and hammer fist. He knocked him down, he knocked him out. Sam Alvey got caught with the left cross, put him away. Dustin Jacoby beat him on points. Shamil Gazatov, he beat that dude up. Modeskis Bukowskis, he won by split decision, but he had those back to back losses against Jimmy Crew and Ovin Pru, both by submission. My man's as a light heavyweight was pretty big. Got into middleweight, moves really good, carries that big boy power. Defense takedowns pretty well. Um, now that he's not as, you know, what I mean, he's not the smaller guy. He's the more sizable guy, a little somewhat the bigger guy at that times, depending on who he's fighting. Big power, doesn't kick a lot, lonely low leg kicks. I see Barrao trying to get the leg kicks on him early to try to take away the, the stance so he doesn't have to get hit with the big punches, the big strikes. Yeah. Um, for Oleg Zuzic, Oleg Zuzic got to get on his bicycle and move, get the lateral movement going early and often, switch stances a little bit, keep Barrao confused, and try to land shots, man. Try to set up your big shots. You're going to need to work a little jab movement against Barrao. Because Barrio's a smart dude. He's going to look to size you up. He's going to look to try to throw a couple punches here and the there. Odd, the odds are crazy. He's going to look for a big kick. He likes his body work, um, Barrio. He likes his body work and uses that body work to when you um, try to engage, then he gets the takedowns. Whether he gets a double leg or he gets to wrap you up with the waist locks or the clinches to get the takedowns, he'll do so. Um, as we said, the man got a good fight IQ. On his Zuzik, stay away, fight at range, then close distance and bang on them with your heavy shots, man. That's what you got to do to beat Barrio. Barrio, we just mentioned, fight with your, with your IQ. Brain says Barrio, heart says Oleg Zuzik. That's how I'm going, man. I don't know man. if I got a solid down path, but that's how I'm riding with this one. This is. I said I had bias, but that's how I'm gonna say it. I'm not gonna say my actual, but that's how I'm feeling. This is a tough Great one, man. Uh, yeah. we, we both we both like both of them, and uh, been a fan of both of them, and so it's it's just. But I feel like they're disrespecting McCall here. I feel like I like I like I know for sure I like the boxing and striking of McCall's better than uh, Kyle Barallo's in the end all around. But the with the jiu-jitsu of Barallo, it's tough. But I'm going. I'm going with McCall here. I'm going to go dogger pass. That plus two ninety is just too crazy to me. I can't believe that they're disrespecting him that badly. I mean, maybe negative one eighty, but a negative three seventy five is crazy. Kind of for Barallo. it almost feels like they're giving McCall no chance. But that's really not how it is. Um, I feel like McCall is way better than they're giving him, uh, making him out to be. But we shall see next uh, this tomorrow. I was saying that this weekend. Uh, tomorrow we'll see. Tomorrow, <laughs> the main event though for this card is Yadong San takes on Ricky Simone. Uh, yes. this, should be, this should be a good one between the heavy handed kung fu kid Yadong Song, uh, 16th century warrior fight out of China versus Ricky Simone. Uh, slight favorite, uh, for Ricky Simone right now. Uh, five years older for Ricky for 30 years old versus 25 Yadong Song. Uh, five foot six for Ricky, five eight for Yudong Song, 67 inch reach for Yudong Song, 67 inch reach for Ricky. I love Ricky's wrestling, I love his chain wrestling, I like his heart, I like his cardio, I like his attitude. <coughs> I don't like his striking, though. Be um, not a bit, I just don't think it's up to par. 
And I, I'm kind of worried for um, him here versus a guy as heavy-handed as Yadong Song. Also uh, comes from a camp, Team Alpha Male, is really wrestling-based. Um, has a lot of takedown defense uh, to drill. Um, if he could just keep this fight standing, I think that Yadong Song could possibly get this fight uh, to get a win. But he's got to start quick. Sometimes he starts too slow. Sometimes he doesn't give enough uh, volume. And if he doesn't have enough volume, then Ricky Simone will definitely make the volume go down even lower with the chain wrestling that will be against the cage. But uh, Yadong Song's a tough motherfucker, man. And I'm 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 just gonna be I'm feeling the Chinese warrior, man. I feel like that he can do this. Be um, his youth, athleticism, strength, and maybe he can just uh, stuff these takedowns, land some elbows to the side of the head, on the head, uh, whatever it may be, and then change the whole fight. Uh, but he can also land some punches too. But I do love Ricky Simone's wrestling, and I do think it's a very scary thing to bet against, which I will not be ever touching because I do not like betting against American wrestlers, and he is thorough, through and through a real American wrestler is Ricky Simone. So I'm just going off my inkling that the, the Yudong Song's uh, striking is just that up to par, and I think he changes the wrestling game of Ricky Simone. But we shall see. What do you say, Mr. B? This is a tough fight, man. Very tough. Big factor. The big factor here is the wrestling. Yep. Um, song Yadong Song Song Yadong, however you want to say it, doesn't wrestle often. He does not wrestle often. He does use his wrestling defensively, That's not all quite needs. offensively. That's all he needs is defense. Yeah, but he's fast. But then again, both of these motherfuckers are fast. Ricky Simone be throwing hands, though. Ricky Simone's wrestling is high-level wrestling, high-level grappling in general. Not only is this man rest fighting in the UFC, this man is taking submission um, submission matches outside yeah. of the cage. You know what I He's mean? We've seen, yeah, we've seen this dude, him and his cousin. I think they, they wrestled on Submission Underground. They had the tag titles at one time. Like, yo, this is crazy, man. Um, but other than that, yeah, his, his wrestling's been high level. He goes for a lot of takedowns, but his gas tank is pretty solid with it. He's riding the five-fight win streak. You know what I mean? He, he beat Jack Shore, which is kind of crazy. But that's kind of crazy that we kind of picked. We, we picked Simone yeah. against Jack Shore. Yeah, we did. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, we did. We bet it. Um, we bet it. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Yo, he beat a Sun Sal, where I think we picked him there too. Yep. Keller. And um I've been riding them. I've been yeah. riding them. But this one's a little different. I'm feeling something weird here. I don't know why. It's just that it's the matter of what, what's happening, man. We also got to remember Ricky Simone got knocked out by Uriah Faber a while back. Faber managed to catch his chin. Yeah, the guy who wrestles pretty good got his chin checked in the first round by the guy that's Uriah coaching. Faber. The guy that's coaching the guy fighting. Yes, and Yadong Song. You know what I mean. Even though Yadong has, he's only what he lost to what he's lost to the higher caliber fighters though. Really, yeah, he's not Corey he's Sanhagen, not. Yeah. Tyler Phillips. He lost to tough guys. Yeah. Compared to like his his earlier losses when he came into the UFC, that's who he's he lost al to. He also has UFC China Performance Center on his back. He, they love him, bro. Yeah, he's being dudes like Mar well. He knocked out Marlon Moraes. He sent Marlon Moraes to the PFL. Julio Arce, he beat Arce in the second round. Casey Kenny, he beat because Casey just think he could throw low kicks and that he his wrestling was superior. No, Casey. Um, he also beat Marlon Vera. I know Marlon Vera is upset about that one. <laughs> and he beat Alejandro Perez, you know what I mean? Vince Morales he beat. Yo, know, I just like his speed. I like his, his his takedown defense. Um, I like that he throws. He throws in combination. He has the big power in his punches. I think he has power to back off Simone. It's just going to be a matter of how much um, takedowns he's going to be able to defend on this one. Yeah. Versus how many takedowns Simone attempts just to defend those things and just make Simone pay on every takedown attempt. We're gonna take we're gonna take song. Yeah. We're gonna take song. That's what I think. I originally thought I was I was, I was gonna take <laughs> song. Because even though I like Simone, I like Simone's wrestling. 
knowing that Uriah Faber beat him, I like some more. I mean, I like the, you know what I mean? One left, um, one left, one left hook changes it all, B. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know Samoa's gonna en- try to engage and get close, and songs punches, you know, they come in tight, tight and quick. Yeah. So those hooks, uh, anything he tends to throw comes pretty tight and fast with power. So, yeah. So I'm gonna take song, man. We'll take nice, song. Dude. I'm glad you agree. I think that just it's going to be a great uh, main event, you know, after a lackluster card. Uh, but there are, yeah. you know, about four fights in there that I really do like a lot. So uh, we did our best to break Same. those down, had some fun uh, between the, the two cards and shooting the ship but watching me rant. Um, we really do appreciate every guys uh, making the show what it is. We do this for you guys. Uh, absolutely love being here talking and shooting the shit with Mr. B. Um, so with that said, Mr. B, you want to shoot out your Twitter handle and where you'll be this weekend for the stream if people want to watch the stream? Sure, man. Catch me on Twitter. New Year's saying B at Mr. B1986. I'm on this Saturday. I will be on OK Live. OK Live. The, the profile is the same. Mr. B. Got a picture of Laura Sanko on it. Check that out, man. I dropped my second episode this week on Wednesday of the B sides of the fight game, the little podcast joint I'm doing. Um, I dropped the second episode on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday you, this bro. week. Just addressing what was going on last weekend and uh, what was coming in this weekend. Um, but, yeah, check that out if you want to. But other than that, fights on OK Live, Twitter account there. There you go. Nice, man. Well, with that said, we really appreciate you guys uh, doing uh, the damn thing, being here with us. Please like, subscribe, and show some love uh, to us. Makes It uh, really helps the algorithm, helps us out uh, in general. I know it's hard to... Click that uh, thumbs like the like button, dislike it, do whatever the fuck you got to do, but do something, do it. Talk shit in the comments, say something fun. But uh, we really, really do love and appreciate each and one of you. Hopefully, we'll be here back next week. Cash these bets, Mr. B. Appreciate you being here, my dude. Till next of time, of course, man. Peace.